morning. Good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Now, it would be very easy for me to come from another place doing this story, which happened 19 years ago today, September 11. So I could, I don't want to come from how in the hell they found those passports and all that trash out there that had been soaked down by water from the fire departments and soot and everything. They happened to find the two or three passports that belong to the Islamic terrorists. Okay? So, but I'm going to put a whole different spin on this story. And um, I'm going to come from someplace totally different. So the first thing I want to do is give my condolences to everybody who lost their loved ones in that attack. I want to send my condolences to, um, you know, all the businesses and just anybody who has lost anyone who who was sick after that or somebody that was affected, not just that day, but maybe after that day, like some of the fire uh, men, I thank them for their services. The police departments were trying to bring some normalcy to a situation that was just totally crazy. So to you, my hats go off and my condolences to those who've lost one. Now, before time, now this was written a couple of years ago, maybe um, 2016, maybe four years ago. And I can bring it right back out now because, hell, I I can't find the flashback video. Before a time, it felt like the attack that shattered America had also brought it together. After September 11th, signs of newfound unity seemed to well up everywhere from the homes where American flags appeared virtually overnight to the Capitol steps where lawmakers pushed aside their party lines to sing God Bless America together. Though that cohesion feels vanishingly distant as the 15th anniversary of those attacks arises on Sunday. But I'm going to say as a 19-year attack arises day. Gallup's poll of Americans national pride hits its lowest ever point this year. In a country that now seems to be carved up by door, slamming disputes over race, immigration, national security, policing, and politics, people impelled by the spirit of common purpose after September 11th Rue how much it has really, really slipped away. John Hill figured it, not Hill figured, Tom Heil figured it could help the ground zero cleanup because he worked in industrial air pollution control. So he traveled from Louisville, Kentucky to volunteer. It is not an exaggeration to say that the experience changed his life. He came home. And he became a firefighter. Hyle, who now runs a risk management firm, remembers it as a time of communal kindness when everybody understood how quickly things could change and how quickly you could feel so vulnerable. Now look, a decade and a half later, he sees a nation where economic stress has pushed many people to look out but only themselves, where people stick to their own comfort zones. I wish that we truly remembered, like we said, we never forget. What did Tavares say? 
Please remember what I told you to forget. Yeah. Now, anyway, I wish that we truly remember, he said. I wish we truly did. Terrorism barely registered among Americans' top worries in early September. But amid economic concerns, a Gallup poll around them found 43% of Americans were satisfied with how things were going. Well, last four were four years later. Hmm. Terrorism, inside terrorism, is registered um, a top threat to American civility in 2020. This is wow. Then, under the two hours on September 11th, the nation lost nearly 3,000 people, two of its tallest buildings, and its sense of impregnability. Out of the shock, fear, and sorrow rose a feeling of regaining some things, too a shared identity, a heartfelt commitment to the nation indivisible. With liberty. Stores ran out of flags. Americans from coast to coast coupled candle flames and prayed at vigils, gave blood and billions of dollars, and cheered firefighters and police whenever they saw them. Military recruits cited the attacks uh, as they signed up. Congress scrubbed partisanship to pass a $40 billion anti terrorism and victim aid measure. Three days after the attacks, an approval ratings for lawmakers and the president sped to historical heights. A special postage stamp was declared, United We Stand, and Americans agreed. A news poll found that a Newsweek poll found that 79% felt that 911 would make the country stronger and more unified. Flash forward, flash forward. Ain't that something? That was just 2016. Okay? And y'all think y'all not crazy to understand that the person that's telling you is he can fix it is the one who created it? I really saw people stand up for America, and I was really proud of that. We were so unified. We stood together. Every race, creed, color. A retired state library agency worker in Lincoln, Nebraska, her foster daughter and her niece, a National Guard uh, Master Sergeant Linda Taringo, was killed on a roadside bomb in Iraq in 2004. Now, Mitch Rondo thinks weariness from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have combative politics, have priced them, have yeah, pride Americans apart. And it pays her to think that the military serving the country is so torn. Well, they they even more turn, uh, torn now that Donald Trump said they're a bunch of losers and suckers. Larry Brooke can still picture the crowd at a post- 911 interfaith vigil, vigil at the amphitheater in Pelham, Alabama. The numbers seem to tangle measure of an urge to come together. Now, I don't think we're anywhere close to that, says Brooke. To him, political partisanship and clashes over Middle East policies are well and off the middle ground. Three days after 911, Joseph Esposito was smoldering ground zero as Republican President George Bush grabbed a bullhorn and vowed that the attackers will hear us all very soon. The moment became an emblem of American strength, resolve, and Esposito, then the New York City's Police Department's top uniform officer, was struck by the camaraderie and the unity 
of those days. He remembers the support the police enjoyed. He enjoyed how much then a tone had changed by the time of the occupant Occupy Wall Street protests in 2011, when police arrested hundreds of demonstrators, many of whom said cops unjustly rounded and roughed them up. Now, the city's emergency management commissioner, Esposito, has watched from the sidelines as the national protest movement has erupted in recent years from police killings of unarmed black men. And as police themselves have been killed and gunned down by claiming vengeance. By gunmen claiming vengeance, I mean. These days, Esposito hopes his job can be unifying. He wants people to feel that the city helps neighborhoods equally to handle a disaster. The one percenter should not be better prepared than the 99 percent, he says. If everyone feels they're getting their fair share, it fosters better feelings towards one another, he says. Much better feelings. Mm hmm that's true. I mean, definitely true. They want to feel like we're getting... I mean, everybody feel like they want to get their fair share. Um, okay, for for all the signs of kinship after seven, I mean September 11, the first retribution attack came just four days later. Uh, Bal Beer Singh Stoddy was shot dead while placing flowers on a memorial at his Mesa, Arizona gas station. Prosecutors said the government mistook Sodi, an Indian Sikh immigrant as an Arab Muslim. Seeing hundreds of people gather in solidarity on the night of his brother's death showed me the greatness of unity, said Ryan um, Sodi of Gilbert, Arizona. But in the last two years, he felt a change of hatred again, and he worries that politicians are stirring animosity towards immigrants and minority. Absolutely. These white people got to have a boogeyman. And it's people that's brown and black. Duh. <laughs> and y'all got the nerve to act like it too. It's sad. Anyway, stick to the script, Khadija. <clears throat> so, does Imam Abdur Rahim Ali, he said, after 9-11, he invited first responders to tea and coffee at the Northeast Denver Islamic Center to show their, his appreciation and emphasize that Muslims are regular Americans. Now, Ali, who is African-American, believes Muslims and people of color are being uh, demonic, uh, demon, demonized with incendiary and divisive remarks. We can't act like racism hasn't been a part of all of this, he says. Can the United States feel united again? Some Americans fear it will take another catastrophe, even if that can shift the climate. Ain't that something? Others are looking to political leaders to set a more corroborative tone or to Americans themselves to make an effort to understand and respect one another. When Sonia Shaw thinks about the push to pull um, American unity since the attacks that killed her father, Jayesh, at the World Trade Center, she pictures a rock hitting a pond. The most innermost ripple, that's the right circle of support that came together around the most directly affected by the tragedy. Outside it, Bigger and more diffuse. Those are the bands of debate over politics and policy in the wake of 911. We usually see outer rings of arguments, says the Baylor University senior, but I think there's always 
a current of unity that goes underneath everything. Just got to see it. Wow. Look okay. here. Wow. I hope you New Yorkers are coping with all the stuff that came about with that 911 situation. I really miss seeing the World Trade Centers. I really do. Because there's so many kids that, and people that just don't even know what it looked like. To fly into that skyline over New York and see the uh, t Twin Towers. We ain't going to talk about the other building seven that just fell down on its own. I'll quit, y'all. Anyway, this is the anniversary. And why don't we take this time to try to unify ourselves just a little bit? We are so divided. So divided. So, and if you can't get along... Let's just get away from each other. Anyway, if you like what you hear, like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you in the next video.